Hey friend, in this video, we are going to be painting some holiday stuff. Uh, holiday stuff, some Christmas stuff. Um, today we're gonna be painting four Christmas cards that you can paint in under five minutes, each one, not all four. Um, so they're simple, they're really freaking cute, and they're fun. Simple, fun, and cute. Um, and you can use them for gift tags. You can use them folded cards to write to your loved ones and send to them in the mail. Uh, let's bring back snail mail, okay? So in this one, we're gonna be doing some cute little mittens with some stitching detail, a snowman, a fun, wonky, cute Christmas tree, and the gosh darn cutest elf you ever did see. Um, modeled after Buddy, Buddy the Elf, but a little bit different with my own spin. And there's some hand lettering in this tutorial too. So if you're ready and you're just in the mood to get a head start or not head start, depending on when you're watching this, on your holiday cards, then let's dive in. While the merry bells keep ringing. Wow. Um, happy holidays. Today, we are going to be painting a few, four simple, cute, uh, Christmassy illustrations that you can do on your holiday cards, little gift tags, whatever floats your boat. Um, I penciled out rough sketches of these ahead of time, not all of them, but some. But all you need for your sketch is a ruler. So I have a nine by 12 block of paper from Legion. Uh, it's linked in the description below. And I just quartered it, whoa quartered it, or if you wanna do smaller tags, you can do nine tags if you wanted. So we're just doing half, halvesies, halvesies both ways to have four cards. It's a one-sided postcard. If you wanted to do um, a folded card, then you would just have the, the card decoration on this side, both sides, and then you would have the one cut right here down the middle, and then you could fold it. I'm going to use my size six brush. Again, all the supplies that I use for everything in my life are always linked in the description below. Um, for these mittens, I think I'm gonna do an alternative route. Of course, opera rose, I forgot to fill, fill that up in my dish, but I'm just loading up with a lot of water and some opera rose on my brush. And if you want to do like a softer pink and not so neon pink, you can grab some white gouache. If you don't have white gouache, totally not necessary, but it's just a different vibe. It's more of a pastel pink. So I'm going to do that. But again, you can just use a lot of water and opera rose for a light wash. So if you don't want to sketch these mittens first, all we're doing is painting a U shape or like a fingernail shape. All right, so what you're going to do is you're gonna use the point of the brush, like a 50-ish, 45, 50-ish degree angle. Hold and paint a U shape. See, little, little horseshoe, upside down U, whatever you wanna call it. And then we're gonna close that off and color it in using water to help it spread. Love it already. Good. Thanks, cameraman. It's a really very cute color. I love that color. It's an alternative Christmassy color. It's a little different than your reds and your greens, but we're gonna have red on top of it with the design, don't you worry. And then next, you're just gonna grab this bottom right corner and do another U shape for the thumb. Cute. Now we'll do the other one. The thumb is gonna be on the other side, guys. We don't want two left hands. So we're gonna do the big U shape. And they don't have to be a perfect, you know, perfect mirror image of each other. We're going for a really cutesy vibe. So relatively easy without sketching beforehand, but if you wanna have a sketch, by all means, you can. And then bottom left corner. Mm 
I'm just gonna, while this is still wet, go back over and add in these thin lines. Just faint. I'm gonna darken those once the base layer is dry. Okay, so that, and then we're gonna do a little, a little um, connecting thread because kids lose their mittens all the time. So we're gonna do a point, a vertical hold, and with some pressure as we bring it around and then release of pressure. Cute, they're connected. Adorable. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna wait for that to dry. Moving on to our snowman. If you don't have gouache, you're gonna have uh, yellow ochre and burnt umber as your base, touch of burnt umber, um, and tons of water. So basically just water on your brush and a touch of that color. I am going to use yellow ochre, burnt umber, and white gouache for like a really off-white, faint off-white color. But again, if you don't have white gouache, you can do this with just a lot of water. So you're gonna paint in a circle and you can sketch this before if you wanna make sure the placement of your circle is on point. Paint quickly so you get it like a smooth coverage over the entire circle. Just a good old fashioned snowball. Snowball. And while that's still wet, I'm gonna do the a red scarf down here with Scarlet Lake. And it will bleed into the snowman's face, but I don't mind. So I'm just gonna grab my size six brush, a thick mixture of Scarlet Lake, so it's not too wet, so it's not gonna bleed a ton. And I'm just gonna use a slightly slanted hold, pressure, and give it a little collar. If you want it to bleed a little bit more, you can grab some water and just kind of poke. That's cute. We're gonna wait for that to dry and add the nose and the little top hat and the letters. Or I guess I can add the letters now. So size two brush for these letters. Um, I like to use a round brush, especially for um, brush lettering for cursive. You can use a flat brush for your printed letters. I'm still gonna use this round brush though, because I'm not gonna do wide strokes. I'm gonna do really thin lettering. So I'm loading up with a really thick mixture of Mars Black. You can do green, you can do whatever color you want, but I'm gonna do black. So I'm just gonna come over here. I do have this penciled out, but again, all of this is supposed to look handmade. I don't know about you, but I love receiving handmade cards. Mm -hmm. So for my lettering, I've got a slanted hold, but I'm not putting any pressure on the brush. And when I'm going around these curves, I like to connect halfway. So I'll do a downstroke and then an upstroke. So I don't have to come around that curve and twist the brush and then it gets splayed and weird. So come down and then. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. And then our cursive. We're going to use, a, I'm not resting or gripping it too tight. I've got a really loose grip, kind of mostly with my fingertips. And thin, so little to no pressure on the up and across strokes. And then you're going to apply pressure on the down strokes. If you need help with lettering, we'll link to some videos I have on calligraphy and brush lettering. So we could probably update those. <laughs> yeah, we could. So pressure release as you come up. I 
I feel like... What do you feel, John? Um, handmade cards. It's a little bit of a lost art. Because who really does them these days? I know. It's so sad. It's a bit of a sad thing. That's why we're here. Mm. Doing the Lord's work. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the Lord's work. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. <laughs> and actually, now that I did that lettering, my snowman face is dry. So let's just continue on. So picking up my size six brush and loading up with, with lots of black pigment on my brush. So I'm just gonna use the belly of the brush. So with medium pressure, kind of drag that across. You can give it a flat edge if you want to and do it this way or not. And then whatever kind of shape you want, but I've got kind of this upside down V shape. Not perfect or even because that makes it V cute. And then we can do our little carrot, carrot schnoz with cadmium orange, a really thick mixture so it's not transparent, it's gonna be opaque. I might add a touch of Scarlet Lake to it for a deeper orange, but we're just gonna It's tutorials like this that really make me miss living in a wintry place, like sure. a, pla a place that really enjoys true winter. Sure. Next, we're gonna paint in the eye holes. Size six, lots of black, and just kind of whoop, whoop, little circles. And he's kind of slanted, so I'm gonna do this one here. <laughs> it's a droopy nose. It's a droopy carrot nose, straight up. He's melting. <laughs> Cute. Moving right along to fa la 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 la. So for this Christmas tree, I'm gonna do something a little different. We're gonna do like a goldish color for the tree and the star and black lettering. But you can do whatever, whatever color you want, but I just want this to look more contemporary and not traditional, just to switch things up. You can do a cobalt tree, you can do a pink tree, you can do whatever. But I'm gonna do yellow ochre, lots of it, and a little bit of lemon yellow deep. And using the point of my size six brush, I'm just gonna bring in So she's just a fun scribbly tree. Literally just doing these wonky shapes. And then a little stamp. Cutie cutie tree and you can do gold letters still or 
blue or pink. I'm gonna do black again. Again, I penciled out the fa la 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 la. You can say Noel, you can say Merry Christmas, but I like this. Making it more wonky because the tree is super wonky. So the slants are all over the place. Nothing is even. Fa la 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 la. Fa la 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 la. Fa la 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 la. Okay. Last but not least, this is probably my favorite one that we're gonna paint. A lot like the mittens. We're gonna start with an upside down U shape with green, sap green, lots of it. And maybe a touch of Prussian blue and a touch of black. Think Will Ferrell's outfit. That's what we're going for here. You didn't even say what you're doing. Elf, I did. Mm, tape will tell. Okay. So we're gonna do an upside down U shape. Make sure there's room for leggies. Again, you can pencil this in beforehand if you want. I'm just gonna eyeball. Good thing that drop landed right there. Did you see that? No. Cute. And I mean, cute. It's like <laughs> it's just like a green, green gum drop. <laughs> green thumbnail. Um. I don't like that. Okay. Like gum drop. And then similar color to the Christmas tree, but more lemon yellow deep for the leggings. And we're just gonna use the side of the size six brush and kind of create a V shape with these two thicker strokes. I think the bleeds are fun, but if you don't want those bleeds, you just have to wait till the green dries. There's his legs. And then we're gonna do green little elf, elf shoes look like boats. So I'm gonna start at the um, bottom left corner here. Shwoop. You can have them touch the leg if you want, just be mindful that it's gonna bleed into the leggings. little bananas. And we're gonna give them a red scarf. Scarlet Lake with a touch of cadmium orange. We're just gonna do a little C curve like that. And then same thing with the snowman face. If you don't have white gouache, just do, do a really watered down mixture of yellow ochre and burnt umber. I do have white gouache, I'm gonna use that. And do a circle with the top cut off. And the bottom, I guess, too. For the so, face. So a square. So a square. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. He's a tall guy. So his hat is gonna be really droopy. So elf hats have that like white rim. So I'm just gonna leave a gap between the face and the bottom of the hat. If I had more room on the top of my card, I'd go up a little bit more, but it's like his sleeping cap. And 
and then I'm going to use that same really light tan or off-white mixture for balls on the ends of his shoes. And his hat. And when this is dry, you can do little arm cuffs, white, off-white, whatever. Um, arm cuffs, but that is not dry. So I'm going to come back up to the mittens and finish off with the detail on the mittens using my size two brush and um, Scarlet Lake. I'm going to paint in little stitching details. The wonkier, the better. Here. Little upside down bees. Or up arrows. Or up arrows. You can do X's. This just takes me back to my childhood. Grown up in Wisconsin. You had pink mittens? Oh, well, <laughs> I, mean, I mean, just like mittens in general. Mm. But I probably had a red variety mitten hmm. at one point or another. Sure. Getting all bundled up on a snow day, going to Killer Hill. What's Killer Hill? Killer Hill is kind of the local sledding hill, and it was a bit dangerous because <laughs> it was steep. Mm. It was steep with woods on both sides. So if you veered off to the right or left, you'd be in danger of smashing headlong into a tree. Mm. Which I believe did happen. And I believe that's why it was called Killer Hill. Did it happen to you? Is that why you don't remember? <laughs> no, I didn't sled into a tree. I ran into a tree for my concussion. It's a whole nother story altogether. I've had a concussion too. Mm. Next mitten. See, I don't have these stories, but what I do have is warmth. <laughs> 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 and I can visit snowy places. Or I did. Could. You have the stories, you just didn't live them permanently. You visited these stories. Right. Like my grandparents lived in North Carolina and they had an awesome hill in their backyard that just led into a forest and we'd go sledding on cardboard boxes back there. The story that you don't have is experiencing the glory the student had uh, when they woke up and it was a snow day. Yeah, I don't have that experience. That's... That's a really good reason to live in a snowy place. It's an incredible experience when you're waking up and... Sucks for the parents though. Yeah, <laughs> definitely probably not super fun for the parents. Although even like my mom, like... Well, I guess we, you don't we, have to go to work maybe. Yeah, yeah, they would get snow days from work, but also like the kids are outside playing in the snow. The good old days. So the stitching's going this way, I'm gonna go this way. Happy holidays. And last but not least, we are going to add a white cuffing detail on the elves sleeves. So it's literally just gonna be like a heart shape here, like he's holding his hands. And you can do dark green, I'm assuming this is a gouache only move here. This is watercolor. But oh, the really? white yeah, the green. But the white oh, yeah. the white is gouache. Yeah, that's, yes. So yeah, that would be a gouache only move. There you are. Four easy, simple, cute, cute, cute Christmas illustrations for your greeting cards or your 
your little gift tags, whatever, whatever floats your boat. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you had a ton of fun. Bust out the cocoa, turn the fireplace on, turn on some good Frank Sinatra, Bing Crosby, you know, the old timey Christmas tunes. None of this pop new age stuff. Hey. Mariah Carey has her place. That's not really new pop though. Like she has her place, but it's definitely overdone. I actually do start to get sick of it, but she's a diva. Anyway, um, let me know in the comments below which of these four illustrations was your favorite, or if you have a favorite Christmas playlist on Spotify, or if you're an Apple iTunes person, uh, drop your link to the playlist that you love for Christmas times. I'll link to mine. It's got some really good old timey songs on there. Some Vince Gualardi trio, the, the Charlie Brown Christmas. Gilardi. Gilardi. I'm not Italian. I have no idea. I'm just kidding. Giordano's. Vince Giordano's trio. Pizza. Pizza. Um, so yeah, I'll link to mine. It's a really good one. And I would love to explore other ones. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.